What's up guys, Travis here from Brink and Company and today we are going to be doing a video that is kind of an add-on video to the Stinger creation video. Uh, so if you watched that and you got to the end and you were like, holy crap, how do I export this to a smaller file size that's a little bit more efficient? Uh, yeah, my bad, I kind of dropped the ball on that and I skimmed over it. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead in this video and touch up on that, on the proper way to do it. And the cool thing about this is this will apply to other videos that you export through uh, After Effects or through Premiere. And if you want to use them in your Streamlabs uh, OBS stingers, or if you want to use them as overlay components um, and stuff like that, you can upload them to um, Streamlabs and use them as assets there because it accepts WebM files. So having animated overlay pieces is actually is really cool. Um, and I haven't done a video on those specifically yet, but that's coming. So this will be a part of that as well. So. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into that real quick and this doesn't take very long It's really easy to set up. So let's just go ahead and get it done So the first thing you're gonna want to do is go into your web browser and Either Google or just go to this link and this link will be in the description. So don't worry about having to type it in um, but go here and You're gonna want to download this WebM encoder for either your Mac or your Windows machine um, And this works for Premiere Pro or media encoder uh, if you've never used Media Encoder, don't worry. We're going to go over it. It's super easy. And once you have this installed, go ahead and open After Effects and find whatever it is you want to export. In this case, this is a different stinger for another project of mine. Um, so as you can see, we have the transparent background, as you're supposed to have. And it comes in, it does its thing, and then it goes out. So that's that's all you need. That's, that's a pretty easy part. So then we go up here to File, and we'll go to Export and we'll go add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. And we'll wait for this to open. Six years later, 10 years later, 15 years later, 20 years later. Okay, there we go. So what it will do, it might take a few, few seconds after it loads, but it will go ahead and add your stinger or whatever comp you exported automatically up here. So the first thing you'll do is you'll hit this H264 and you just click on that and it will connect to dynamic link server. This takes a, it can take a little while sometimes. And then you wanna go over here to format on that window and go down to WebM. And if you have audio, make sure you leave it checked, but if you don't, you can go ahead and uncheck it. Um, so this is, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, so I use 2560 by 1440 for all my assets because that's what resolution I output from. Um, if you have a slower rig or, or you're playing something that's very CPU intensive, your stinger will lag at higher resolution. So what I like to do is export two versions of my stingers, uh, the 2560 and the 1080 version, um, and then kind of test them to see which one runs a little bit better. In my case, 2560 by 1440 runs well enough. Sometimes it's a little laggy, but most of the time it's fine, so I just leave it alone. But if you notice that you're having trouble with it, you can either drop the frame rate, frame rate down to 30, or you can turn the width and height down to 1080p. So then the next thing you wanna do is come down to codec settings, and make sure you're on VP9, constant quality, and you can turn the actual quality slider up. I usually turn it up to 100 because these stingers are usually so short that they don't generate a very big file, usually about two megs, which is, I don't know. I mean, if you know anything about video editing or video work, that's nothing. Like that's literally nothing. <laughs> uh, make sure you uncheck two pass encoding. We're not going to need that. Uh, you can leave the sampling and the bit depth alone. Make sure to include the alpha channel. That's probably the most important part. Um, cause that's, that's, what's going to show your transparent background. And yeah, that should be good. You can use maximum render quality. Uh, I've never actually needed to do that. So I just go ahead and hit okay. And you can just set the location of where you want it to go. Uh, you don't need to touch anything else. And then just go ahead and hit uh, start queue. And once that's done, uh, it will generate a .webm file wherever you decided to save the output file which you will then be able to use as a stinger the same way you would use an MOV or an MP4 or whatever it was you were using prior. And yeah, that's, that's all there is to it, guys. Um, once you have your output file, you just go ahead and add it as a stinger like you normally would with the other file types that you had prior. 
Uh, and if you want to see what kind of file size you get, the 2560 version of the Stinger that I just showed you, if you look down here, it comes out to be 1.75 megs. And if we look at the 30 FPS version, it's even smaller than that. It's not even a full meg. So, you know, you get great quality, you get your transparency, you get audio if you want it, um, and you get a really good web ready format, which Streamlabs works really well with, and so does a lot of other things. So that's it. I hope this helped you guys out, and I'm sorry I didn't add this in the last video. Uh, I know I got a lot of messages and a lot of tweets and stuff that were of people that were very confused, and uh, yeah, so I hope this makes up for it. Uh, the next video will be how to make more animated overlay pieces. So for instance, like Instagram overlays and Twitter and stuff like that, just little animated things you can sprinkle in to kind of freshen up your overlay. So I hope you guys are excited for that. I appreciate you checking out the video and I will see you guys in the next one.